What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. As you see in the thumbnail, <laughs> what now? What we got on the agenda? If you're curious to see what I got hiding behind this car right over here to talk about dad's stock bottom end turbo car, then stick around, hit that like and subscribe, and let's get into it. Here we go. Now, as most of you guys have been following the channel, this is my blue LX stock bottom end GT40 build. This is my white stick shift 408 turbo build, multiple Fox bodies on my channel, along with the black turbo car. So I know everyone has their own favorite car that we have on the channel, but today we're gonna to be talking about the blue Mustang. Now, dad's blue Mustang, and that's what it's called, has been a, it's been a journey. That's what we're here to talk about is what's next. Now, a lot of people might say, well, let's just skip to the end. Uh, you know, let's just go right to Terminator X and see how much power we can make. And what are you wasting time for with that old stuff, Dan? Why are you doing it? Because I want to figure it out before I move on. You see what I mean? So I guess that's kind of like the point. We live in an age where it's like the next best thing, right? But I'm not here to knock on that store sort of stuff. I'm actually here to just explain to you guys that we have made a transition in this turbo stock bottom end car that you know shows a lot of uh, old school technology, shows a lot of like the way we used to do it back in the 90s with the with the boosted applications. But we're not here to bore you with with that stuff. I'm here to just talk about what's next for Dad's stock bottom end block and the tuning situation. So as most of you guys know, we've been building on a GT40 stock bottom end motor. And for the most part on a speed density car, we have been very successful. We have basically taken an on three kit and we cut it up and we kind of made our own turbo kit. We're currently using an old school Kenny Bell FMU to control the 19 pound injectors making power. And for those of you guys that have been following the channel know that we recently made 351 405 to the wheels on 19 pound injectors on a Mustang dyno and that's pretty impressive for what it is. We're here to talk about what's next with dad's car. So to be honest with you guys, the biggest problem that we're having in this build is the fact that our injectors are pretty much out of fuel. When we were running a bone stock motor on the A trim that we have in a box with that Kenny Bell FMU, AFR ratios were pretty much in the high 11s, which was perfectly good. So with 19 pound injectors, we made 335, 380 wheel and we had a blast with it. It wasn't really in any danger of blowing up, but as soon as we put a turbo kit on the build and put a whole nother motor in, things started getting crazy. So what's our options, right? You know, I'm pretty much stock speed density, stock tune, no chip. The FMU pretty much back flowing the 19 pound Explorer injectors, right? We're kind of at the point where we need to make a choice, either switching to a mass air meter or going to a Terminator X or doing some binary editor tuning. That's pretty much where we're at. So there are a few tricks that I do want to mention before we actually get started and I'll show them to you one at a time. Okay, so for my first trick that I'm gonna try to do on dad's stock block, stock bottom end turbo kit. No, keep it in mind guys, it's about the journey. Not rushing to the end, trying to make a whole bunch of horsepower. We have decided to get a hold of Donnie B at Anderson Ford Motorsports, and he hooked me up with a Vortec brand new FMU. Now I had a little bit of a situation where I had thought that the maybe the fmu you know this kenny bell fmu has got to be at least 30 years old maybe even maybe 25 years old whatever but i mean you can see even the screws are a little bit rusty and if you look on the video right here you can actually see the afr go up and come down and go up and come down and i'm thinking that it maybe just maybe we might have an issue with the fmu so before we actually take the fmu off dad's turbo build, we're gonna actually put a brand new FMU on. So again, Donnie B at Anderson Ford Motorsports hooked me up with this. It's actually an adjustable FMU. As you can see, all these little discs and these little spacers here actually change the flow rate on the internal part of the Vortec FMU. The FMU stuff obviously comes with brand new braided line. This is like a dash four and it has the, you know, the hookups, just like my Kenny Bell does. We're gonna set it to 12 to one, which flows the most fuel on return. And we're gonna see if just maybe that FMU might be just kind of going out and maybe he'll keep up the, a little bit better than the last one. Now I know this is old school trick and this is old school technology guys, but again, it's about the journey. So 
I really want to find out, since I got the brand new wideband hooked up, I really want to find out if putting the 12 to 1, which is 19 pound injectors, in a brand new FMU, dad's car is going to actually change the fuel ratio on the car. And we'll actually be able to check it by making a hit on it outside. However, not going to be able to do that, unfortunately, in this video, because I can't get Ohio to stop snowing. You're just going to have to wait to see if the FMU actually worked. But we have a second trick in mind that we're going to talk about right now. So this, this video is going to be kind of like a roadmap, right? It's kind of like a roadmap of what we're going to do with this stock bottom end GT40 motor, which would relate to a lot of people, even with the, uh, you know, entry level aluminum heads and entry level intakes and B cams and what have you. If you have a stock bottom end Fox body stuff, this is the build you need to be paying attention to as I boost it and do the things I do to it. If that FMU doesn't do what we want it to do, then the next trick at the dyno while I'm there is going to be to install 24 pound injectors. I got a set of Ford EV6 with EV1 connector, 24 pound injectors. Who's to say that this injector won't richen our mixture in our speed density DA1 computer? You know, I would be ventured to go ahead and blow out a set of spark plugs just to find out if they'll actually richen the mixture up on the 12 to one FMU disc if it doesn't get the AFR that I want. Might run a little rich at idle. I guess we'll just find out, won't we? Remember, it's all about the journey with the Fox body Mustang. All right, so most of you guys know what the next, very next mod is. One that a lot of people have done over the years. I mean, when the speed density stuff was going out and you were locking your timing and then jacking your fuel pressure up or whatever, they started mass air converting and just so happened we got several mass air computers, you know, that we could use that we've rebuilt. Um, we got a set of 42 pound injectors that just so happened to be in Project Hot Wheels, if you guys remember that build. What sparked this little mod or in the journey of making power on GT40 stuff is the fact that I found a $300 BA5000 mass air meter on Summit's Scratch and Dent sale for like a hundred bucks. So this was the same meter that we used in Project Hot Wheels. And it's a slot meter. So the slot meter is found right here in the pipe coming up the passenger fender well here in into the intake tubes. Naturally, that's an easy transition as, uh, as we have that, that slot blocked off right now because it's speed density still. So. And of course, net last but not least, we have the Motes quarter horse chip from Project Hot Wheels and the tune on the laptop to do it. So pretty sure I could probably make 450 to 500 wheels, pretty much max out this motor for the most part on what I got sitting right there. But again, like I said, I want to go through a transition. You know, I want to go through the journey because I've never really did this to any of my other cars. I just jumped right into mass here and see how much power I can make. So I hope you guys appreciate that. Um, this is a, you know, step-by-step, step, not jumping to the end, end game, how much power and be done with it. This isn't going to be a short journey. We got, a, we got several videos we want to do before we, and we're going to take it one step at a time. And last but not least, you guys already know where the end game is. Uh, the last few years, the, the, the technology and the, the ability to tune and the ability to get these cars tuned to make power has progressed leaps and bounds. As you already know, we got a Terminator X on the shelf. And this is exa exactly where we're probably headed with dad's car. As in, I've already got the map, the three bar map sensor. I've already got the whole Terminator X install here, along with the wide band meter, the, the 4.9. So that's probably where we're gonna be ending you know, with tuning up dad's car as far as making power and such. But again, I've done a lot of binary editor tuning in the past with the mass air stuff, and I'm still having a bunch of fun with this FMU and these 24 pound injectors, etc. I know guys, I know you just want to see end game on what I can actually make as far as power wise on dad's car, but you're gonna have to be patient. We're gonna take it one at a time. Now this video is very useful for those folks that are trying to boost or trying to make a little bit of power, get their car off the jack stands, and just have a little damn fun with it. You know, the FMU will get you there. The, you know, what I'm doing here with dad's car right now with the, with the cheap budget mod stuff, that'll get you there to get it off the jack stands, get you down the road, have some fun. Because in the end, nobody wants to sit there and stare at a car that's on jack stands. It feels like it's just a car payment, right? At that point. But that's where we're headed with dad's car at this point. We got, it's a nice little roadmap. It shows you, you know, one step at a time that we used to do it back in the day the FMU and the injectors and when binary editor came out in like the early 2000s, et cetera. And now we got the Terminator X, which I'm gonna be honest with you guys, is a huge, huge upgrade at this point. Sometimes you don't have to jump all the way to the end. Sometimes you can enjoy some of the old stuff that's already been there for a long time and, and make some power and have some fun with it. 
I do want to make one special mention before we get out of here. I am in direct contact with a person who is very good at electronics. So I am developing a map, map sensor, possibly, that's forward frequency related, that's a two bar. So we may end up pausing some of the tuning stuff that we talked about just today to see if we could actually make that stuff work. And that's a very interesting thing. Imagine if I could tune speed density boost without actually having a mass air convert. People's done it in the past, yes. Comment below on what map sensor you used because I'd be curious to find that out myself. Outside of that, guys, I appreciate you watching the channel. I appreciate you taking the journey with me on dad's car on the Blue LX Turbo Car. Guys, if you appreciate the channel, check out that join button below. We got a channel membership that you can support the channel with. Outside of that, guys, I just appreciate the likes, the subscribes, and the watch time that you guys do to hit, listen to me ramble on my favorite hobby. So stay tuned to those mods that's coming up to, on Dad's car and stay tuned to some of the other videos that's coming up this week. I will see you soon in the next video. Thank you.